I'm Philip Duncan from ruralweather.co.nz with your Climate Watch update, the last one for 2023 as we take a look at December and January, February, March going through into summer of 2024. And this covers New Zealand and Australasia as well. So let's kick off with the animated air pressure map for the 1st of December. Low pressure in the dark shading and high pressure in the brighter shading in the yellow and whites. So we're certainly seeing a mixture of pattern and chaos. It's a quote that uh, the former weather ambassador from Met Service, Bob McDavid, hello if you're watching, uh, used to use all the time. And it's something I should start to use more often because it's a great little line and it really does sum up what our weather is all about. So we do see a pattern of high pressure drifting from the west to the east, but the chaos low pressure and thunderstorms forming around Australia, and some of that is coming over towards New Zealand. So it's good to know that because this is the reason why sometimes our forecasts don't always go the way we think. We can see the pattern part of it and the chaos part of it, but the chaos sometimes can uh, get a little bigger than we expected or a little smaller, and that can then change the outlooks. But the general big picture, that is not one that is changing too much. And we are certainly seeing El Nino being measured at the, at the moment up at the equator. But this is the comment we are getting all the time at the moment. So much for El Nino. Where I am, it's not happening. So where is El Nino measured? Well, it's measured way up here at the equator. Here's New Zealand and Australia. So it's a long way away that we measure equator. It's not measured at your house. So just because we talk of more westerlies and you know, usually you see eastern areas drying out, we're not in summer yet. Our headline was spring uh, with El Nino makes spring more spring-like. It makes it more chaotic. That's exactly what we've seen in the New Zealand area. It's almost been textbook, except there's been more rain than usual in Hawke's Bay. That has certainly been unusual. So that's part of the chaos, right? But the, the, the general theme is that we're seeing this pattern of more high pressure and up here in the equator, we're certainly seeing warmer than average sea surface conditions. That's one of the critical ways of measuring El Nino and much cooler out here, certainly around Australia, cooler than average to the north. No wonder it's drying out so much around the top of Queensland. So where is El Nino going? Well, this is where we are and this is where it peaks. So we're pretty much in the peak of that global El Nino pattern. But your local weather pattern may only just be starting to wake up to this because we're only just now going into summer. So the talk of hot and dry, at least from my perspective, was always about summer and autumn, not spring. Others in New Zealand were certainly talking about that in the mainstream media, we saw all those headlines. And I think now, this is why you need to have more detail, because you can't just have a headline that says hot and dry. We, we know this from the last three La Nina events, which two of them brought drought to the North Island. That is definitely not what they teach you at school about what La Nina does to the north of New Zealand. So that again just shows the chaos factor in our part of the world. And I talk about this a lot, the chaos factor, because we're so far south of the equator. The equator, of course, off the screen, Antarctica just down here off the screen as well. We're smack bang in the middle. And the roaring 40s, this big belt of weather that covers more than half of New Zealand, dominates our weather regardless of what's going on up in the tropics. So let's have a look and see what is happening here for week one. We kick off with that low near Australia and the high pressure block around New Zealand. So that is obviously in the first week drifting to New Zealand, but it is weakening. And part of the reason it's weakening is all the high pressure around it and south of it. Uh, a low pressure zone needs a southerly coming in to help spin it, can't just be one direction. And so at the moment, this is all mostly being fed by northerlies and it's not having a lot of southerly airflows coming into it. So that's part of the reason that falls apart. The other interesting area, low pressure in Australia up here towards Broome in Western Aussie. So if you connect Broome to Sydney, that diagonal line is where we're seeing a lot of low pressure and thunderstorms. And then some of that, carries on towards New Zealand, all depends on that high pressure zone at the time for us. Now, as we go into week two, for those of you who watch our Pacific Islands update, you would have known already about the tropical low up here that's hovering around. It wants to form into a tropical cyclone, uh, but it's got this high pressure belt just around it uh, to the south and also just a little bit off here to the west, which is helping sort of keep it in a box. So that low is hovering around the Solomons and Vanuatu. Whether it forms into a tropical cyclone or not, 
we can't tell you at the time of recording this, but even if it does, it will need this high pressure belt to disappear if it wants to come down into the New Zealand area. I used this analogy the other day, but think of these highs as big trucks driving on a motorway from west to east. And the storms up here, they wanna come through that traffic, but they have to sit and wait for the big slow trucks and buses <laughs> to be moving along. So they might sit there for a week or two waiting for a gap, and in that time, it falls apart completely, or it does wait two weeks and finally sees a gap, sort of like in between the highs here where it can drop down. That's what we look for. So as we go through to week three, doesn't look as though that low has got many chances to get away, unless of course this is a new low forming. Now we do see around the Cook Islands some low pressure dropping southwards. So that's what we mean by in between the highs, there's a chance that a low could drop down. So it all depends on the red blocks, the areas of high pressure. They are the determining factors on steering low pressure zones. And as you can see, as we go through into December, a lot more in the way of high pressure. Still getting some southerlies here. This is a southerly flow, which means the eastern side of the North Island will get a little bit of wet weather going into December. But we're still seeing big blocks of high pressure and the uh, desert inland parts of Australia still seeing low pressure, which favours thunderstorms and downpours and hail as well for you. Let's get into the marine area. I thought this was broken when we first looked at it. You know when you get a barometer and you have to tap the barometer to make it work. I did the same with the screen when I saw this because it's the first time since I've been using these maps for a couple of years that we've seen green all around New Zealand. That means we do not have a marine heat wave. It is absolutely normal sea surface conditions around the country at the moment. So great work from the Moana project. Nice to talk about that. Soil moisture anomaly now. Well, no surprises here that Hawke's Bay, the eastern side, is very wet. This doesn't look like El Nino. You are very right about that for those who push back. But as you just saw in the big picture, New Zealand's a very, very small blip in the overall El Nino setup. But this, if someone showed me this, um, you know, several months ago, I would say it's probably La Nina, not El Nino. But this could be changing very quickly over the next few weeks ahead. And um, I think, you know, for those in the east of the North Island, it'll be very good news to see a drier pattern. But we are not out of the woods entirely just yet. So let's have a look now at rainfall coming in. This looks messy, I get it. You go to our website, you can look at this again, maybe make a bit more sense of it. But really, I want to show you that very wet weather up here. This is unusual in El Nino to see that much heavy rain, three to 400 millimetres of rain over the next two weeks to the north of uh, Fiji. So that rain here in that low pressure zone we just talked about drifts towards the Solomon Islands and Vanuatu. That line there, that blue line, suggests that might be the tracking of it. But the blue you see just here is all high pressure. So yes, a cyclone or a storm may form, but whether it keeps on going downwards doesn't look like it, not at this stage anyway. That could always change, as I said before. A gap in the highs is all it takes. But there aren't many of those gaps. They take a while to come through. So very dry for much of Australia. We're still seeing that wet weather. Mostly that might be that low we've got right now at the end of November going into December. And some of that wet weather coming in for the first week of December here on the West Coast. But on the other side, dry. So let's have a closer look at that for New Zealand. And you see once again, some of that heavy rain coming in for the first weekend of December, but the eastern side from wide or southwards, not seeing as much in the way of heavy rain. This might be a little messy to look at. It's on our website if you wanna take a closer view of it. So let's make this simple now, long range stuff. Using our long range data that we get from IBM, and this is the world's most accurate even if it's not perfect, it's still the most accurate we've got out there. So we might as well use it. So today I've put on the leans drier, leans wetter to make a little more sense of it. So here we are for December. And yes, still leans a bit wetter for the eastern side of the North Island. A lot of that will be just in the next week. And it doesn't appear to be rain warning criteria. Not yet anyway. That may still change. This is not a weather forecast so much. It's more of an update of the month ahead. But you can see it's still a little bit wetter for the eastern side of the North Island. But Len generally leans drier elsewhere and still wet with the thunderstorms and those downpours in Australia. Let's move through to January now and the North Island leaning drier, a bit more normal perhaps for uh, the further North Canterbury, the upper part of the West Coast, and then leans wetter once again for the bottom part of New Zealand. And in Australia, 
those thunderstorms becoming a little more isolated by the looks of it into the driest month of January. But Look what happens in February, it gets wetter again, more humidity back into the atmosphere by the time we get to February and New Zealand looks like it still stays drier for the top of the country and for maybe this northeastern corner, which is exactly what you want. So we're hopeful this happens. You know, like we say, it, it only takes one low pressure zone to break our forecasts. I'm not a huge fan of doing forecasts this far out, but many of you want us to. Um, so we do it. But I always say, just because it's the most accurate in the world, the data we use here, doesn't mean it's 100% perfect, not at all. So we still have the wild card of what might come out of the tropics. Let's take a look at the bigger picture here. This is December, January, February. You can see the thunderstorms and low pressure zones around Australia bringing some wet weather for them. Uh, and in New Zealand, as we just discussed, you also notice up here that low pressure zone is driving in heavier rain for Papua New Guinea. Let's take a look at again the next three months, this time from January. So January, February, March of next year. No real change. More thunderstorms and a bit of low pressure here for New South Wales. And then that sort of spills over into those that are nearby. And some of that spills over into New Zealand. That's the reason why the South Island, in particular the West Coast, Fiordland, Southland and parts of Otago lean wetter. Canterbury's a bit on that borderline. You can get both could be wetter or drier because of wind direction changes moving through for you. But the North Island does look like it leans drier. So that's the forecast. Um, we don't have another Climate Watch update again coming out this year. Our next one will be in January. And so when we, uh, at the end of January that will be. So that's eight weeks from now. But we will in four weeks time as we go into New Year's Eve, do a quick update on our website, ruralweather.co.nz and weatherwatch.co.nz. And we're going to take a look at this because the maps I've just showed you, they're going to be really worth challenging in a few weeks' time because if they're still, if we're still getting lots of rain falling in places that aren't expecting it, then I think we can safely say we don't have to worry too much about the El Nino pattern this year in New Zealand and Australia, or at least a large part of those places. However, the long-range data has suggested all year that it could be a bit wet in New Zealand for spring, and that summer could dry out. So that's the data we've got. Hopefully it's helpful to you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Just before I go, this one last map, I wanted to show you the really big picture of the planet because every time I show New Zealand, it's always just yellow. We're always leaning half a degree to one degree above average. It's been that way for years. When you zoom out, you can see that other parts of the world are cooler. It's not broken. <laughs> we are seeing cooler areas, but yeah, look at that, a large portion of the planet December through to February, warmer than they should be, but it might be a little bit snowier maybe for some parts of, uh, of America. Anyway, that is all from me. Thanks so much for joining us for our Climate Watch update. I'll be back again at the end of January or start of February around that time. Have a great summer and don't forget, we will be updating you on our websites, weatherwatch.co.nz and ruralweather.co.nz. Have a great summer. I hope the climate and weather is kind to you.